Hello subscribers and others, it's David Hoffman, filmmaker, with another clip from one of my old films. In this case, we're looking at a nurse practitioner who has her own little shop in a poor area of Appalachia. I really care about nurses and nursing in part because my daughter is a nurse practitioner in San Francisco and also because I've had a couple of major medical shit in my life and nurses were glorious to me. The way they treated me, beautiful. So I get this job to do something on nursing for a friend of mine, Mike Singer, who owns a company called Cherokee Uniforms that makes nursing uniforms. And he gives me a grant to make what you're about to see. And I send my daughter and a terrific filmmaker, John Barrett, out to the middle of Appalachia to record Mona Counts one day in her life. The way she treats these people who are pretty sick by and large, who are poor and have hard times, I feel for them. I feel for Americans, really for all people, who live with poverty and fear of medicine and medical crap. I wish I didn't have any, but we all do, don't we? So watch Mona Counts one day, just the life she lives as a nurse practitioner, and then see what you feel about her and about nursing in general. We are a medically underserved area, which is referred to as an MUA. We're in a HIPSA, which is a health professional shortage area. And we have an extremely poor economic base, and many of the patients we serve are poverty level. Health in Appalachia is function, not just absence of disease. And I think that's a very different kind of concept to deal with than what you see in maybe larger metropolitan areas. What do you think? Well, I think that she needs to not, not come here because of money. We oh, no. We can't wait that long to come in for that because of that. I, right. We had this conversation once before. Right. That, that was I three still, months ago. You know, still the, okay. So you don't have the money. You come down, you can clean. What do you want? Egg in your beer? I don't drink beer. So. Just the egg, please. Can I have that boiled? That's right. All right, well, I'm going to go call LabCorp and see what they have to say about that. Tammy, do you have insurance now? No, I haven't had insurance. She hasn't had insurance forever. Well, then it's a comp yeah. bill anyway, so five years. Yeah, but when we're doing the indigent, we're asking them to uh, pick, up pick up the other half. Swallow. Hey, you can't wait that long between times. Come on now. <laughs> I'm always on a go, seven days a week. That's because you're the primary caretaker, John. I have to. Hey, I want to ask you something there. Maybe you might could tell me. Now, my daughter and them, they want to be, what do you call that guy? If, if me and her die off, okay, which we are, remember? Yeah, uh, the power of attorney or the executor of your executor, estate. Yeah, do yeah. you have to have him? Is, is that a must? It's a good I idea. I don't know nothing. You were you were gonna call me with the bank lady's name and I was gonna help you do that, remember? Do you have somebody appointed to speak for you? No, no, I don't know. Them attorneys, I hate them. I don't no, like No, 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 no. Not a, not a lawyer. No, I'll do it myself. What if you can't and talk? I'm dead. <laughs> Miss Roxy, you sleeping already? Yeah. What happened? I just started not being able to breathe. That brought me in here. My daughter's dead. Okay. Who are you uh, living with? Your daughter? My daughter. This is what, the third time this year you've been in? That's what I thought. Okay, we're back to the beginning. Where were you born? A uh, little town called Booth. At home or in the hospital? Home. Home. Okay. Any stories about your birth at all? 
Uh, they didn't have to put you in a shoebox or no. anything like that? Okay. And I was poisoned by treacherous castoria when I was six months old. The doctor gave me up for dead, Dr. Talbert. I know you never heard of him because that's been years ago. And he laid me on bed and get, gave me poison, told my mom if I'd live 24 hours after he gave me my medicine that uh, I would live, and I lived. Oh, good. And he gave me poison to kill poison. What did you get into? Fletcher's cast story back at that time. Oh, it was, that stuff was... It was poison. It mm -hmm. was poison a lot of children. At six months, how'd you get it? <laughs> my mom gave it to me. She didn't know that... It was bad. Okay. And how far did you get to go in school? Sixth grade. And then what'd you do? Transferred me to Wayne Board and I quit. <laughs> <laughs> and then what'd you do? They put you to work on the farm? Yeah. And what were you doing mostly? Help my dad with coal and wood, cutting wood and carrying coal. All that heavy stuff. Okay. And then what else did you get into? Oh, uh, a lot of honoriness. Huh? As a child, honoriness. Honoriness? Good. Well, you didn't give it up when you got older, did you? No, not really. Okay, good. When you were cutting coal, were you doing one of those little coal mine things? Yeah. No. Okay. What all illnesses have you had? Well, I've had a heart attack. I had six strokes, and I have a complete hysterectomy, and I have a couple, three ulcers, or not ulcers, but we call them hernias in my stomach, which they ain't been taken out yet, but they're scared to come my lungs. Okay. Well, that's about it, yeah. All right, did you ever smoke? Yes, ma'am. How much? How long? About two packs a day. Ever since I was, well, I started off about 10. Still smoking. You're still smoking now? Yes, ma'am. Two packs a day? Yes, ma'am. Would you like me to get your patch while you're in here? I can't afford to pay for now. Well, no. You have Medicare, right? If it's one of the medicines you take while you're hospitalized, I think they will allow it. Okay. I'll try. Okay. Because they won't take. When I admitted Roxy into the hospital, it was extremely evident that Roxy was not feeling like Roxy, that she probably was in pretty bad trouble at this point in time. Usually Roxy, even with her exacerbations of her COPD, is still feisty and won't you know, just gives everybody what for when she comes in and that type of thing. She's um, but she was relatively quiet. I mean, she was responsive and that kind of, but it's gonna be a harder recovery period, I think, this time for her. Have a seat right there, we'll tell Mona you're ready to see her. See, I watched a good friend of mine go with Alzheimer's. I helped take care of him, his wife passed away. And it's bad, you know. And I forget a lot, and so naturally I'm concerned. But I wanna go through these tests because this could be just the beginning. You know that what we do with these things is we do them once a year. Some of them you'll remember, some of them you won't, some of them you don't care whether you remember or not. And it's just to make sure that we're keeping you healthy and that we don't miss something just because we know you. Okay? All right. All right. Where, what is the season? Well, I would say it's the beginning of the fall season. Okay. I see on TV the other day, they're talking about gasoline. Generally, the 4th of September starts the fall season because people quit traveling. Okay. And gas is going to go down. Maybe. Okay. And do you know the date? Uh, the 5th, 5th of September. And what day is it? Friday. Where are we right now? We're in your clinic, 
in a room in your clinic. Okay. And what town? Mount Morris. Okay, this is a pen, a light, and a sink. Okay, what is this? A pen, a light, and a sink. Okay. Now, remember those for me, okay? Can you spell world backwards? Wowzy. D L O W. I missed one, I think. It's okay. What were the three objects that I gave you before? A pen, a lamp, and a sink. Repeat after me. No ifs, ands, or buts. No ifs, ands, or buts. Guess what? I think you're doing awfully well. Write a sentence, any sentence, right along there. Uh-oh, see? That's what I do. Memory, I forgot. I know how to spell memory. Okay. When I start writing it, I go, okay. See what I did there? I know how to spell that. Loss. It's all right. But I misspelled it there. It's all right. Now, if I go real slow, I could probably spell it. But I'm forgetting how to spell simple words. That means you're getting smarter, isn't it? <laughs> what were the three objects I gave you before? A table, a pen, and a sink. And you are on the scale. Let me show you the scales we use. The Folstein, the highest score is 30. You were at 29. When you drop 27 to 30 is very normal. You know, you really don't have the memory loss that would be associated with Alzheimer's. Thank God for that. Okay. The fear of losing one's mental capabilities is very great. Answer as you have felt for the last week. His fear is what now, is immobilizing him right now. He's on the moderate side of depressed, though. And part of that, I think, is related to his fear that he's having that he does not want to lose his mind. Is it Alzheimer's? I don't think it is. I think the more you get in involved and stay involved, you're gonna have less fear that you're getting Alzheimer's. And it's not necessarily meaning you have dementia. The skills that you wanna keep, you gotta keep using. You know, the old adage, use it or lose it. You wanna keep your thinking kinds of stuff, keep using it. That happens in our guts, it happens in our heads, it happens in our eyes. You wear bifocals, right? Right. That's from the relaxation. It's not as taunted as it was. My mother used to say that my eyes are fine, my arms aren't long enough. Okay. Yeah. She cares about her patients. She don't, you're not a statistic to her. So how long were you actually in the hospital? From Saturday to, to the next Thursday. Thursday. Come home around noon. Five days. You haven't had any chest pain or anything, have you? Oh, no, no. Blood pressure's good. My heart's wonderful. <laughs> Lungs. You still taking all your medicines? Yes. You haven't changed? Yes. No. What was it? They were giving you a low-sodium diet while you were in there? Yeah, but one day I had everything for Thanksgiving dinner. They brought me turkey, gravy, all the stuffing, everything. The hospital has pretty good food oh, over there. Oh, they do. A pie every day. <laughs> you were doing so good. <laughs> then you happened to go find a twig and fall on yes. it, right? Oh, Lord. I'm hollered every day about it. Hmm. She said she'll never go outside again. <laughs> now, don't say that. you got to get out and walk, man. Oh, I know. I know. I can't wait, but not to go around the trees. <laughs> No, you just got to make sure you got good shoes on and you need to look where you're going. Yeah.
you know what happens is you curl over like this and instead of seeing everything where you're walking yeah, no. you only see that little spot so oh, if you no, I know, no. we're gonna put the backpack on you pull your shoulders up you know like they used to teach you in high school mm. come on get those shoulders back get them up <laughs> come on there you go you know if you walk that way you see a lot better yeah <laughs> serious when you're walking with her help her remind her if it's that okay with you mm -hmm. Because then you won't hit another twig. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> it didn't hurt. Really didn't yeah, hurt you at all? I couldn't catch myself. Didn't even make any blood or anything. At least you didn't break anything. Yeah. Squeeze. Squeeze. Hard. Hard. Give me a grimace. Yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> Your cranial nerves are still there. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. And are they taking good care of you? I guess. We had a patient call here that said that uh, when her lab results came in, that you were to see her right away. She called today, wants to be seen tomorrow. This is your schedule for tomorrow. Tell them I'll see them after I see all the scheduled patients, which will be what? 6.30. Oh my gosh, this woman's intense. I used to think she was crazy a lot of the time too, truthfully. I really did. I thought she was crazy. And I'd say, Mona. When do you sleep? I want to know when you sleep. I mean, I, I'm an intense person, and she, she outruns me by a mile. And this woman never stops, never stops. How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you go through your life helping everyone else? You know, when do you help yourself? He's going to fix me. Oh, you even got your hair up? Oh, All right. yeah. I was trying I, to impress you, Mona. But you, but you better be up. I, it's surprised seeing you. I know. What can I tell you? You won't come see me. i got to come see you. Well, I'll you be out to see you. Don't you worry. Yeah. Yes, I will. Yeah. I don't need to see Mona. I just saw Montaigne. I'm not sick. <laughs> You're supposed to stay healthy. <laughs> not get I sick. Better, I better stay healthy, Mona. With everybody else around me falling apart. Been a long right. time since I've seen you. Good well. Are you feeling good? Yeah. All right. No, tell him the truth. She hurt. All right, tell me the no, truth. Ma, the shoulders hurt. Oh, my hurt. shoulders hurt. She can't hardly pick anything up. Remember them mom. shots that you mm -hmm. gave me for Did it help? Yeah, good bad. Has it been three months? Uh, no. Okay. Yes, it's been three months. It was <laughs> June. I don't know. June? <laughs> yes, it has been three months. <laughs> Yeah. So what are you doing for fun? Anything? Not much of anything. Are you walking at all? Yeah, I'm walking. I've had an I've had a fiftieth anniversary. I, I just got through asking Montine if she invited you and she said no. I said all well, the things not inviting my doctor. Well yeah. congratulations. You wanna see part of my album? Sure. Can I? Excuse me. All yes, right. I will. I'll get it for you. Now, did you spark on this swing? Uh, uh, huh? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Just, just thought I'd check. Oh, how neat. Yeah, nice. I've never seen a plaque like that. That's pretty uh, cool. Forget about it. Oh no, I've got that one down on the wall. Are you kidding me? Okay, let's see the pictures. Uh. And then there's some in Colorado. I have. This is a lot of fun memories for you, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. It was nice. That's cool. It was really nice. Yeah. So what are you doing so you stay healthy for the rest of the time? Fight with David. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. I here lately haven't been doing much of anything, pushing that wheelchair around and helping my arms, of course, you know. Well, that helps you. Yeah, exercise. You getting out and walking at all? Not we're just up and back and down here. Had you tried going down the ramp and up? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've been up and down that ramp. And how is your breathing doing? Mm, pretty good. And how about your feet? Are they still swelling or do they slow down? Mm, I don't know, Mona. <laughs> I don't take care of myself very good. I. That's why I'm asking you all the questions. I know. You want to take care of everybody else, but you got to stop and take care of you occasionally. Well, I know, but I mean, I ain't got time. You better make some time. 
I say, you got the time to. See, I'm getting pretty good, along pretty good at my age, you know? You're how old, 17? <laughs> not quite. Not nah, quite? Not quite. Now you You're know right. how old I am. Well, I don't tell people's age. I don't tell well, stuff I, about people. I don't care who knows my age. I've earned every one of those black hairs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you take it easy, kiddo. Shortness of breath? Yes. Yeah. Virginia yeah, Tucker you. has lived there for, what, 48 years? I'm tired, is she knows she's getting older. Swelling's gone down. She refused to have surgery three or four years ago to have her knees replaced and, as she says, bionic parts put in. I just hope and pray I get that stupid chair soon. You have United Mine Workers, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. They should not be charging a cent. I know, and Dawn wants to... And she does not want to move away. She does not want to go into a nursing home. If there is any way possible that we can support her staying in her home, we will. Is your heart beating irregular, or is it regular now? Did mm. you go back in and out of AFib? It, it fluctuates depending on when she takes the medication. You, you know, I try yeah. to Carolyn lives in the house next door to Virginia. And Carolyn said she'd come over and help her. Right now it's working out. We also have home health and a few other things coming in so we can help her stay in her home. She says, I want to die in my home. I don't want to go anyplace. Mm -hmm. She is in congestive failure. She does have intermittent AFib that's sometimes under control, sometimes not. Um, but right now what we've just found is she's probably going into chronic renal failure. I call it old-fashioned. She talks to you, she tells you what you need to know. Not some of this college stuff that only she would understand. But she breaks it down to where we understand. That's what I really, really, really like about her. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't get into a doctor. No, I wouldn't go. I'm not just saying that about him. I probably wouldn't either. Yeah. <laughs> this is After we make sure really that really you don't have any deep pain. Yeah. They really, really help. Thank you, sir. These are the niftiest hoes if you haven't seen them before. Uh, they're definitely... The VA supplies them, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you have to buy them, though, do you? Oh, they're, 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 they're high. They're like, what, $85 or something like that? Something like that. A set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, the varicose veins. They're all water. gone. And the, the if you look at the tone of the skin, it was all copper colored before and real dark and very glassy looking. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then all these veins would be up about the size, she said, her finger. I'd say the size of my thumb. Mm -hmm. They were very they, big. They were huge. And see that uh, toenails there are cleared up. Those are all clear. The, the one on the other foot, though, is still... Mm -hmm. Yeah, like but, it's, but it's grown out about that much from the back. It keeps moving out. I can tell a difference at it. I am impressed, sir. I thank, thank you. you. No, I thank you. Uh, no, it's I, fun to watch somebody get better. Well, yeah. <laughs> Larry used to have... Uh, well, obviously, he still has. He has diabetes and he has high blood pressure. But his peripheral vascular disease was so bad that he could not walk. The whole quality of life now has changed because he can walk. And he can now control the things such as his high blood pressure and his diabetes through more exercise. Still have a little way to go on nutrition and that kind of thing, but you can keep working. Uh, let's see. West Germany's River to the Rhine. JD's been wonderful. I mean, he's very quiet, but he's always he's there. You know, you kind of you can feel it. When I drive home at night, as I drive home, I think of Mona and uh, hope hoping she might be up for me. Hi there. Good morning. Good morning. I guess yeah. it is morning, isn't it? She's like a fine gem, and uh, you don't find too many of those. We'll take that. Both sides is fine. Both sides is fine. More so on one than the other, huh? You have 10 years to quit. She's my support sometimes. And I'm her support. And it just counteracts each other and balances out. Look at that motorcycle on the car, though. On the truck. There you go. Thank you, sir. 
Pick on John She's the reason so that I'm in the shape I'm in right now. <laughs> I beg your pardon. If you don't keep walking, you're going to be really in good shape. <laughs> hey, Dean, is that telling you anything? <laughs> look at him and look at you. you you're right. a bad shape. I'll walk. Here's a pickup. <laughs> you're in the hospital. You're going home. Most of the time, you can separate yourself, and you can have a work life, and you can have a home life. When you're in a clinic and you're there full time, then that's the 24-7 thing. Because those people are going to count on you around the clock, whether that clinic's open or not. And I see that in my mom. Now, my mom, it's always been that way, my entire life. Uh, the phone rings, you know, nine times out of ten, it's a patient. If it's not a patient, it's a friend, but the friend still has questions with regards to their health. <laughs> you know, so that's hard. You have to be, uh, no kidding, you have to be into it and dedicated because that's just the way it is. Hey, John, baby. How are you? I saw Dr. Geis. Now, I know you're eating, but I just... That's all right. Uh, and uh, he wants me to go to this uh, psychologist in his uh, office. Yeah. In that group practice yeah. over there? Yeah. Hey, you willing to do that? Yeah. yeah. You know what they told me? What? 1400 for one day, whatever that means. Yeah. $1,400. Oh, my God. Yeah, $1,400. So anyway, I I nearly have to go because this is state policy. Uh, you know. Tell guys that we have... Licensed yeah. social workers that yeah. do, you know, right. do the counseling right. at the clinic. Would well, that be equivalent to a uh, psychological evaluation? Yeah. I'll tell them. I do believe. Yeah. I mean, right. I tell you what we'll do, John, is we'll, um, I'll get Rochelle to give you a call. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and eat then. Okay. 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 Hey, thanks. Talk, talk sure. All right. Okay, thank you.